support here, Lyric. It is just that jungle and potential safe mid blind that RA would do in the past. And there really are no other, I'd say, premier junglers open. There it is, <laughs> because we've seen Olaf fall down a peg. Uh, teams obviously sh shying more away from the graves. I know a lot of you guys have been highlighting the, the win rate that he has is not good. Yeah. And both, both picks that you thought would be high prio are showing up once again. And that insane, again, kill pressure, volatility is still here on the rift. Scaling element to go through it while Hecarim, this is another pick that hasn't seen too much success. Of course, not picked as much as the Graves, but a lot of jungles have been shying away from this despite the uh, past nature of it being so aggressive. The thing about it is it's a very slow starter, right? We're going to see him uh, chill out, farm early game, work his way up towards that Triforce. The thing I like about it, though, is you're always going to be able to find your way onto the back line of RA. So very similar to what we saw last game to where it was doing to be finding his way on the back line. This time, Baytron's going to run it with his E, ult in, and get on top of whoever it is, Lil Yen or Iboy, before they're able to put out all of this massive damage. On the other side, though, Grog is locked in, and it seems a, a lot more standard towards, uh, I guess, team fighting or, or, or that scaling element, right, for RA, while we have a lot of the snowball potential already built up on FPX. And now I wonder where Fofo will go because we saw the Lucian take away by FPX. They don't want to give over that AD Soul Laner with the Karthus. The Renekton now being banned out. I wouldn't be surprised if Jace is the next champion taken away. It is something Fofo's played in the mid lane as well. And then it's like, well, what are you left with? I guess you could swap Tristana into the mid lane or something mm. along the lines of the Yone is, is still there. Yeah, I love that you mentioned that. Fofo's champion pool, one of the most exciting in the mid lane. I wouldn't put it past him to play the Tristana if it comes up. But I want to talk a little bit more about these bands because the Nah, the Seraphine, things that can actually be played in those solo lanes. But we did see that from Doombi in game one from the little part we saw. At the very least, making sure that there's not something to amp up some of these huge AD threats from FPX. Yeah, the Seraphine especially, right? Because the Lucian can always be put in the bot lane. Uh, LWX, a premier Lucian player in seasons past, has a lot of opportunity to pull out the Tristana with uh, the way he can use his cooldowns, eating yeah. in, looking for the passive procs, but Ooh. still fanned out. And now we're going to be looking towards potentially an AP mid laner for the side of RA, realizing, hey, the Renekton's not on the table. We don't necessarily want to opt into the Jace or the Yone. So looking for something more stock and standard. Still going to have an insane team fight no matter what they go for here. Yeah, I was going to ask you, this is now locked in. Do you then flex the Lucian towards mid lane? Because we know that Lucian into the Orianna doesn't have that bad of a matchup. Yeah, it, it, it definitely isn't. It's also not too bad for the Orianna because Lucian mm. is a champion that I'd say does win out in most mid lane matchups. Orianna has traditionally been seen as one of the safer, more neutral picks into it. But I'm interested to see where FPX go with it because <laughs> it's definitely much more of an LWX pick to me rather than yeah. a do and be special. I wouldn't expect it of Doom B, right? But I'd also say that just because we see a Scion, I wouldn't expect that to be in the top lane with a massive question mark. Hey, Doom B's we... played it mid once. Yeah, he has. He has. So even seeing the rumble, let's remember that Doom B always up to his usual antics and a reason why people love watching this mid laner. But seeing rumble, this was one of his favorites in 2019. He's got a big cheeky grin on his face as well. So expecting to see that mid going into something like the Orianna to try and bully out the lane. Yeah, so the way FPX countered this, this team fighting coming out from RA, right? RA has a lot of long range. They have the card assault. They have a lot of zoning tools. Because FPX is saying, you know, screw that. We are going to, like, ram our way past it. They're very short range. They are very brawly, have a lot of AoE themselves. And I expect this to be a much faster paced game coming out from FPX. Now I wonder if they're going to keep these picks swapped around. <laughs> I do yeah. still expect to see Doom be on the Rumble, but they have until 20 mm. seconds. LWX needs a swap. Okay, we do get Lucian in the bottom lane. Uh, that was a very late swap. Usually in competitive play, we do see as soon as everything's locked in, players start swapping around. But I guess uh, Stake probably whispering in their ear, talking a little bit about how these cops are going to run. And I, I like that in game number two, you talked about seeing LWX in the past on something like this Lucian, because a very volatile laner, you mentioned how can bully out the Tristana, but this is one of his best historical picks. And I think he's one of the best Lucians in the league. If I remember correctly off the top of my head, he even pulled it out in the 2019 Summer Finals that they played against RNG. And again, he was just a player in 2019 Summer that I just remember every time we pulled out this champion, it was magical to watch. 
and it's obviously not really considered much of a bot laner anymore. It, the range disparity is usually too much to handle. You, you don't scale too well into the late game. You're a lot more along the lines of an assassin in my mind than you are an actual AD carry, but hey, yep. when you've put this draft around it, that is so brawly, is so aggressive early on. You can find the tempo in mid lane, go bot, drop the equalizer. FPX have the tools to snowball this game. Talked about the front to back team fighting, or, or, or maybe I should use a better word. You talked about the team fighting element of RA. You mentioned how FPX want to snowball here. FPX have dive again, Lyric, right? This is how FPX play their game. It's how they've played years past. And running into RA, this would be a needed win to continue that forward momentum towards the top of the standings. As we once again get Jayos, we're in Shanghai Arena, and the crowds, ladies and gentlemen, are back. I love the RA, whoever's fueling up the RA chance doesn't even wait for people to join. Yo, he literally solos it out and says, I don't care, I'm the true RA fan. So uh, a lot of enthusiasm coming in out of the crowd once again as we enter the final game of this series. FPX and RA to the final standstill. Another game three for RA, who have really liked to play this game three since coming back from Chinese New Year. And RA's composition, because I know we're looking at a lot at FPX, RA's comp in, in Pick and Ban, you mentioned team fighting element. Is it just a simple front to back? Is it just about scaling and then again using uh, the range on Karthus and Tristana to your advantage? Yeah, you, you definitely want to be able to kite out and bait out some of these ultimates coming out from FPX, right? You, you want to be able to waste the sign ultimate. You want to be to drop the equalizer and then re-engage a fight with, you know, whether it's Aatrox on, on a flank or Cube flashing in, Hung flashing in, and then looking for your time to strike because... FPX are pretty much like a one-hit wonder, right? Scion ult and Rumble ult. Ooh, it's Chris. Looks Good like just, just saying hello. But yeah, once FPX drop their initial combos and abilities, their composition is pretty much done to where RA mm. win out in a war of attrition and a war of DPS. Getting out of the fights is going to be difficult as well, right? You know, that engage is a lot of the time one way with Onslaught of Shadows. If Doombi goes into the melee ranges, Rumble, LWX Relentless Pursuits in without something like the Devore Quick Blades to get some of those cooldown resets. Uh, it's going to be pretty devastating, but we should be talking about the early lanes and how junglers can actually make their way in, especially Beichuan on this Hecarim who has Ghost. They're heading towards the top side for now, Lyric. Uh, bottom's already pushing in for FPX. Doombi against his turret. And it's going to be interesting to see the first interaction come out and how Beichuan can push that early game tempo. I'd love to see him to be able to get a flash out from Fofo. Fofo just getting that ward down, I think it will make it quite hard for him to do so. Maybe he might have to wait for the reset, look for the back and gank through bot side. Uh, Doombi should know that that ward is now there, but you know, in terms of laning phases, I like that Fofo is taking advantage of this matchup early on. Rumble, it's quite annoying to play into the Syndra. You're trading your HP uh, pool for her mana pool. So you're walking up, throwing out the Flame Spitter whenever Arcane Comet's up, looking for a bit of a trade. She's going to throw back her QW onto you. And it's also annoying because she can always pull back the E with how telegraphed your Flame Spitter is. You're not going to have much pressure until the level 6 mark where it starts becoming a bit dangerous for Fofo to be overextended because the Equalizer can always be dropped. I also like if you play at range through the wave as well, you can dodge the Electro Harpoon, which is quite a lot of damage in the early levels from the Rumble. Uh, Don't be actually just moving down towards the scuttle. People want to beef here, Lyric. Beichuan's four and so is Lo Yen. I also like that Doombi just walked back to the wave, hit one minion, and it's now level four. Chris goes in. And there's engage. Onto Hung. Body slam. Still at the ready, I believe. He has flash too, but FTX have their eyes on the other prize in Loya. Bait one sitting in the ring, though. Almost going down, but healed up thanks to the AD carry. And Doombi gets his first kill of the game. Jumped on for the reset from my boy and FTX. Now left in a numbers disadvantage. The flash away from Fofo was genius as LWX. Relentless pursuits into a wall. It's gone so wrong for the team that needed the snowball as iBoy is given everything. And it is tragic for FPX. We see Beichuan leading the charge going in early, but gets absolutely cut off from the rest of his team. All of RA's there, he's taken down and the rest of FPX's members will follow. We're gonna go straight into the replay. Crisp going in with the flash. And this is where Beichuan keeps going forward. LWX, you saw it was getting zoned off by the Gragas. Beichuan now a bit too deep while iBoy is able to follow up. Hung stays on the backside to pick that one up, and sure, it's one for one to start off with, but RA definitely having the superior position, as well as the mechanical 
No, nah, I wouldn't say that was an error, actually. He was just trying to get a, a proc from his passive, but just already in, in a very bad oh position. Oh my god, we're doing it in the same position again. FBX gonna get the first kill, but they're slowed down by the wall. Pain and Crisp gonna get traded off for Le Yen. A one for one in the end, kills do go over, and, you know, we just decided to fight in the exact same spot. I remember when I was coaching Flamingo in 2019, we were spamming Karthus and Cibulo. And Shrimp, yeah. you know, former Dignitas, coach Jungle and NA would always be like, guys, it is my job to die in these fights. If I die in these fights, we will at least get one for one, if not more, and we will win. So glad True. to see, you know, these Karthuses following that same philosophy that I learned firsthand. Giving over resources to this team that's already in a good position, right? RA, after winning the earlier fight, they may lose the one for one, but they might find a little bit more. Bait one has walked into the den of Raptors. Skittle number one dodged. The second one, though, no, as Cube's coming in. Blast cone taken, and he was an inch away from losing his life yet again, as FPX are just not giving up. They're continuing the aggression. And I think that was a, a bit of an overreach coming out from Beige Juan. You know, we highlighted how picking aggressive matchups in the cart, this looking for the invades, you have lane prio, it's the way to go, but Hecram not really falling into that same context as something like a Kindred that we saw in game one. It does look like we're gonna get a replay of a top lane skirmish. Does, ooh, get a really nice Q2 to cancel the Q coming out from Scion, but Nuggery just having a field day gets the solo kill. We missed that one while we were going towards the Skittle play for Karthus around Raptors. Nicely done. I mean, Scion's early damage needs to be respected. As Beichuan going in once again, Onslaught of Shadows actually sends Popo towards the turret, but the ultimate truly was an equalizer as long as they can get this because dissonance is going to get the slow nugri coming in and this side has an ulti it's time to tokyo drift this one but fofo actually dodges it himself until he goes down okay getting a bit ahead of my guns as fofo finally hey, dies that was some nice sidestepping but oh. that combo in the mid lane was so beautiful i love doing these equalizer position they are abusing the fact there's no flash but chris just Dude, it's nine kills in seven minutes. Yeah, get away from red buff. Saves the, uh, I guess, trade from Lo Yen in the meantime. Hysterics, we have a Lucian, we have a Rumble. We know to expect the high kill games. And I'm just glad they're delivering, right? They didn't shy away from the fight. They're continuously going. And even on RA side, they have Noriana, Karthus, Tristana. They don't care. They are still looking to play around where they have lane prio. Each one has Ghost, but no ulti, and Doobie's coming in. His Equalizer available, ladies and gentlemen, it is not, but the Flame Spitter damage is way too much, and down he goes yet again. Luyan has the ultimate, but no one's low enough to be affected. as Beichuan doesn't care. He's trying to kite away from the Skittles in the end, and he'll manage to get the big Raptor after all said and done. Yeah, a, a, a bit greedy right there. Trying to kite up over Raptor, Raptors. Fofa was already back to lane. FPX just punishing a very small mistake coming out, and even at this point in the game, FPX's comp is definitely stronger. The one area where you can highlight where RA are strong, right, is I Boys. You see it on our screen. 2 0 and 2 already having a Noon Quiver compared to just two Long Swords for LWX. Imagine watching LCK when there's 10 kills at 8 minutes in the LPL. This is, uh, this is definitely delivering on multiple fronts. He talked about item choice. We'll discuss in a moment because LWX actually getting dope. There's a flash body slam. Charge down and I Boy with kill number three as LWX does not pay respect, nor able to burn any of the summoners. Yeah, and just really nice. This is what Duinby was highlighting, right? That RA's bot lane is extremely aggressive, having some of the most 2v2 kills in the league. They're always going to look to push their advantage. We already highlighted the item differential that was there, and they're just going to keep pushing that forward. Beichuan answering on the opposite side of the map does get this Herald. Now I wonder where they're actually going to look to use it. I actually don't think it's that impactful topside. You have a Scion. Maybe look towards the mid lane to unlock your Rumble a bit more and, and move him around the map, but there's no like easy place where you can drop Herald and guarantee you're going to get a first turret, right? Mid's melee yeah. versus range, your bot lane's losing, and your top lane's a Scion. So then, once it gets put down, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit more about what FPX do here, because we talk about team fighting comp and how RA are going to scale with this game too, especially with a Karthus that's, yeah, he's one and three, but still has resources. Fofo's in a decent enough position in this lane, and iBoy's so set up. It does feel like RA with this pace of game, if they are continuously trading, then they're okay with how it's going so far. Exactly, and they're actually the team that's ahead in gold, and they're looking for another aggressive play. Lu Yen is here. No flash, but body slam there. Relentless Pursuit needs to be used, but LWX 
holds off for now. Hung was trying to draw it out as he now has explosive cast. I like it because you look at where members are on the map, right? They have no information of where Beichuan is because they don't really have vision, deep vision control in the enemy jungles. Beichuan was bot side. Doonby was uh, very evidently pushing out the mid lane, so not wanting to get collapsed upon 4v3. Instead, going to wait for their window, try to be cheeky with this one, and they actually might be able to find it. Or at least set up for the dragon if they get anything off the back. Hung, level 6, remember, but crisp as well. Lo Yen is in the bush. And let me tell you, the only thing that's in the bush are snakes. LWX, Wall of Pain, there's the first drop of damage. And a little bit early here as heal has actually burnt for the movement speed. Lo Yen doing half his health anyway. I mean, he has to burn the heal, right? Because you still have Requiem coming out for Lo Yen. You have Rocket Jump as well as Flash on Ivo. You can always get in there. We're going to move back to the mid lane, though. FPX are going to follow my, my same uh, line of thought. Going to drop this one in the mid lane, give Doonby some gold. Try to break this one down faster and give Doonby more opportunities to move. Well, Dragon is being contested in the meantime. RA still sticking around, but Beichuan... <laughs> He's got other ideas in Stance. mind. You'll be going to get the shove here as Look well. Look at Naguri oh. as well. He is hovering around mid lane. Oh, he is. And he has ultimate available. Almost there. Hung and Lo Yen in the jungle. The meanwhile, play kind of fizzles out. So, looks like Lo Yen and Hung will just go back to clearing. Rather, Hung to the bottom lane at the end of the day. While well, Dragon started again, but Beichuan uh, doesn't really have the information available to keep this going. Yeah, but at the same time, they tried to start it up as LWX was back on a base, just trying to pick up his own Noon Quiver. And now this should be a free dragon for the side of her Adam. Oh, actually, we have teleports on Doombi. Explosive Cast uses it up first. It is secure, but the Magnet Storm with the Equalizer. This is the combo that comes together so nicely. Eyeboy sends him back, flashes over the wall. Beitron gets knocked down, and so does Chris for his death. Doombi now running against Kubu, flashes over the wall. Here's the ulti from Nuguri, but hits the wall. As now with the Infernal Chains, he'll get pulled back. Eyeboy now against the wall, taken down for the 600 gold. We're still fighting in the mid lane, though, as Nuguri knows he's probably going to die. Flashes over the wall, and there's nothing Doombi can do to save that. Still three for one trade in favor of FPX. RA do get Dragon. That is a bit of a silver lining, and we are seeing both of these teams and their compositions do what we asked of them, right? FPX need to be the aggressors. They need to be looking to snowball. They have the early slash mid game power spike coming in. RA are fine with taking more of a backseat. Them trading kills is totally okay. Them stacking dragons is what they're aiming for. We're gonna get a replay. We actually saw Hung's ultimate come in early, so pretty much did nothing. Chris with a really nice uh, Ferromancy into the E and ultimate, comboed yeah. with the equalizer. Nuggery and Q both arrive to the fight, and we see this 2v2 on this side, while on the opposite side on our minimap is where we saw Beijuan soloing out the Tristana. So FPX are creating a lot of chaos, a lot of, like, different skirmishes, not really a set 5v5 team fight, and that is still very good for their comp. As now we're looking at Lo Yen versus Beichuan dodging away from Q once again. It feels like Beichuan doesn't want to get the file anymore, but yep, flash into the waiting arms of Doombi with the Night Harvester who now gets killed number four. I mean, Turbo Chem Tank up against Sakarthus, what can he really do in the 1v1 up against Hecarim? He really has no options. Gets run down and gets abused for looking for that invade, and I like that we're also funneling more gold onto Doombi. Uh, does have his my mythic item. As we know, we've seen more rumbles and just more champions in general stray away from the rocket belt ever since it did get the nerfs to its uh, movement speed. But we're in, a, we're in a, a pretty interesting point in this game now, right? Like you were mentioning before, you know, trading off for RA is good, but the last couple of plays haven't been trade off, have been advantages. And doing be even now with Equalize with Beitron nearby, Onslaught of Shadows up as well. Every single time, Fofo's going to start paying respect to the Rumble who started out slow, but it now is a very good combo threat. I mean, Hysterix, we can even just look at Mythics, right? We see four Mythics for the side of FPX to where only Eyeboy is sitting on his Kraken Slayer. So, FPX definitely want to slam their foot on the gas pedal right now. We're going to see Rift Herald come up soon. I'd love to see them get that, but Eyeboy not getting any spice. Another reason why, you know, we talked about Lucian versus Trisada feels quite nice. Maybe I have to hold World Ender in the top lane. Nugri got a solo kill before. Cube wants one back. Decimating Smash doesn't get the knockup, and so Cube can follow this through. Good kiting from Nugri, but the second knockup hits. Unfortunately, Cube does not have the flash. Therefore, solo kill is averted, and Nugri will have to ult back to lane if he wants us. Okay, now we're going to ult the bottom lane. Beitron with the Onslaught of Shadows once again, and FPX 4 versus 2 in the bottom lane. Where have I talked about that before? I mean, right, this... 
This is a very reminiscent comp, like we were talking about. We have the Rumble, we have the Lucian, we have a, a bunch of engage and dive threats on all side. This is pure comfort. FBX have been going back to pure comfort pretty much every game. But sadly, we're not going to see them pick up the Rift Herald like we'd asked. They are going to get bot lane turret out of this trade, but RA at least equalizing in the top side. We'll see where they can put the second Herald. Of course, turret planning has gone down, so the value goes down a little bit as well. FX did get first heart blood too, so there's noting that the gold lead at two and a two thousand and a bit because of it, as Nubri just doesn't care that there's two people here. He's going forward because Doombee's behind him. Beach one there, equalizer onto the Carthus. Beach one has his ulti on cooldown, but he's still running with the chem tank up and available. The E doesn't connect onto Lo Yen at the end of the day. And FBX come from half a screen away to make another play. Yeah, so close. The one thing this will get them right is they will have tempo on the map. They are still there. Resets having to come out from the side of RA. They are going to put a lot of pressure on the cube. And they have four members topside right now. What's Cube gonna do? He's knocked back. The damage still immense here from Bait One. Attract and repel stun. Locks down nicely. Nugri's tanking up. Presses W, and that's all you need. Bait One gives the kill over to Chris, while Iboy's left alone for the response play. So FPX still doing things as a team. RA focusing on getting critical gold onto their primary carry. We do have Dragon coming up in 20 seconds, though, so I don't okay. expect the action to settle down. Equalizer should be up by then as well, so expect FPX to make the aggressive play. Nuggery and Crisp went to look for these engages, but no ultimate for Crisp, so that could be a game changer. I'm also curious that those teleport timings, whether they'll be available, but with three seconds till Dragon comes up, the answer for Doombee at the very least is no. Solar lane is for RA2. They're here on the Ooh. Dragon first, and FPX know it, so second Dragon given over, setting up for that condition of RA you mentioned now heading towards Soul Point. Yeah, late resets coming out from FPX. I would say in a fight, RA were also going to be a bit fortunate that iBoy's Flash actually just came up right before that Dragon spawn, so that could have been another potential pressure point had FPX opted into that, but coming off the resets, they are five manning and death falling down mid. They're going to try to threaten their presence with a dive to take this turret. Because note that iBoy's still not here. Equalizer on the back line, though, and the charge from Nuguri just lands Lo Yen into the wall. Turret goes down with it as well. And this is what we like to watch in the LPL. Cobs that try to go fast. And this time are being successful. And also adaptation, right? That's the that's the thing I love about this series is, you know, again, sadly, we didn't really get to see draft order in game one, but two very True. different ideas about draft. We come into game two once again, two drastically different in this Karthus pick just hanging over our heads. Game three, you wonder, will FTX first pick it? They don't, they give it over, and they draft this composition that can just abuse it with the lane piles it provides, and also just the access to the back line that it has. And it's really cool to see when these teams make these adaptations. Not giving uh, RA a chance to breathe in this final game. 17 minutes it, it's 18 kills on the board. Just about 18 minutes too, granted, but still the true LPL game at the ready with a 4,000 gold lead for FBX. They've got hey. three turrets under the belt. And... Calm what? down, sir. Do it be said. They need to fix their early game, their mid game, their late game. It's still losable. It's not true. perfect. Hey, it, well, people can in, right? Do it be said so. In. He did. He did. And, you know, with the way iBoy was set up, even though he lost his bounty, let's remember that for RA, you know, their condition of scaling, of getting Carthus to a great point, the, the team fighting we mentioned, especially when iBoy's almost towards two items, FPX have to continue this momentum and especially not give over that next dragon that puts RA on a good timer to start contesting some of these fights. That's the thing, right, is... Now RA have bought themselves a lot of time if they do just want to start conceding, getting defensive wards in their jungle, just kind of pick up the scraps that they're allowed to by FPX because it's on FPX to accelerate this game and look for the win. So I wouldn't be surprised if we we're going to start getting to the point when Baron comes up that we're actually going to see FPX set up the vision topside like they're doing now and looking for those Baron baits because it's, it's too far in the distance for FPX to look for Dragon Soul themselves. Yep. I see the Herald getting dropped down in the meantime as well. Uh, that'll just go down the mid lane. Won't get too much. I think even Nuguri can come and stop it alongside Bay Chuan. So this Herald must have just been timing well, out. This this is also just a byproduct of getting a Herald while you're behind is actually pretty useless because you don't have push in your lanes. You don't have prior. You don't actually have the agency to drop a Herald. So uh, even if it wasn't timing out, I, I don't think RA would be able to set themselves up in a good way to, to benefit out of this.
Also, just taking the Herald as an act of denial, right? So, um, for a team like FPX that can really push the tempo with something like that, uh, it does feel like for RA it was kind of important to take it from them. Uh, but 1 minute 50 till the next dragon coming up. An important timer. Baron, of course, in 10 seconds. But we won't talk about that until we need to. Uh, two items before this next objective for pretty much everyone on FPX. <laughs> as Beach just, just runs. He just keeps going. He doesn't stop. He's fast. And, you know, he's he's now got the uh, lyric. I'm, I'm blanking. I don't know why. He's got two items. The force of nature. Excuse me. It took a while to get there. But there's a lot of mobility on the horse. You know, I'm, I'm glad that uh, you figured it out because obviously yeah. on, on our screen, because, you know, we do have the, the, the Chinese broadcast, we didn't add up for us. So I was like, well, uh, I can't answer that question right now, Hysterics, but <laughs> Hung, uh, I don't have the cask. I'm guessing trying to dissuade and engage that was coming out from FPX. And FPX are doing it exactly what we predicted. It looks like they're going to try and bait oh. out the bear and they don't have the fastest bear in timing. So I want to see how RA reacts to the situation. Actually, a lot faster than I expected with Illusion and Rumble. But uh, Teleport coming through, and remember the turn's big as well. Beichuan gonna have to be big on the smite, has a level advantage over Lo Yen, but Nugri is zoning Hung going in, Teleport into the backside, the wall of pain in front as well. Baron going down, they got a turn for the play, Cube is there, looking for the steal himself, but it is secured by FPX. Now Beichuan horsing, has to go Nene, as LWX sends out the culling, and Nugri already into a zombie. It's one for the Baron, and at 20 minutes, FPX forced the play. I just love that FPX absolutely coin flip that. No, they're not looking for a turn. They don't care about, again, looking for the kills, using their, their team fight advantage to snowball the game forward. They're like, hey, let's let him in the pit. I'm ahead in levels, and let's just go for the 50-50. Let's gamble it all on this yeah. one fight. But hey, you know, despite my criticism and, and I'd say uh, sarcasm, it worked out. That was FBX just taking a, a split moment to, uh, I guess, throw it in the air. But uh, I should focus on this dragon because FBX are coming back in. The reset here from Nugri. He's far away. Four versus five. No moves. equalizer as well. Yeah, so a lot down. Beitron still going in, though. He oh, steals he it. And FBX it. take the dragon. Now they're turning for Cube. The chains don't pull Doombi back in. And Cube, without his ultimate, is just a sitting duck. FBX aren't done, though. His oh, equalizer beautiful. finally up. And Eye Boy sandwiches himself right on top of it. Half health for the AD carry. And rare Adam of making molecular mistakes as Doombi is walking forward, wants to silence him. Bait one still going in. He doesn't know the meaning of disengage as Nuggeries ramming his head. The Magnet Storm, beautiful. The ultimate nothing from Lo Yen. Doombi going golden. He's body slammed as a response, but FPX still make the play anyway. I mean, FPX got the dragon. At the end of the day, that's what's important. They did lose some barons on key members, but at the same time, their comp's all about grouping up 5v5. So I don't think it should matter too much. I'm just kind of surprised that Chris didn't flash earlier and look for the engage after the equalizer was dropped. We'll have a look again because April traded the head for RA. Bar this dragon that Mr. Chad just Ooh. walked in and yeah, decided to take. He didn't, he didn't even smite it, actually. We saw the, <laughs> the smite come out from Karthus and Matron must have just gotten it with his E. Q picked yeah. off. Here comes the equalizer. I guess, it, oh, Chris actually getting locked down by the shockwave. So that's why he didn't flash over the wall and look for the engage. So really nice coming out from Fofo to make sure that they didn't get tied down. RA now are so close to turn, it's very hard for FTX to commit to this. They don't have the damage to actually burst out uh, Hung. It doesn't look like Fofo went golden during that time period. And then they're able to pick up two kills on the backside. Actually, yeah, actually turns into a, Fofo a didn't... Kill I'm guessing Fofo didn't have a stopwatch unless he sold it, so he didn't go golden. Yep. There's a, there's a lot going, a lot of moving parts in that fight as well, I mean, and again... You he know, was behind Hung's character model, so we just have true. to make an educated guess. It's also hard when we're looking at a stream at 144p, right? Like, it is, gets very difficult true. to work out what's going on, as Nuguri might be in a similar situation. Doombi, meanwhile, getting solo <laughs> killed by iBoy. Uh, and down in the bottom lane, I think we're going to see another kill go over to Rare Adam. Nuguri can't escape. He used the unrelenting force, or rather unstoppable force, excuse me. Nuguri's dead. Two for Rare Adam at FPX. Uh, uh, suddenly, without solo lane. You have, you have one member of RA showing in mid lane. Only Fofo is showing on mid wave. Maybe Hung is showing on a ward. You don't have eyes on the other three members. And you still push up so far. It does look like iBoy went for a, a little bit of brush shenanigans. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll give Doombi a bit of a pass on that one. Nice play coming out from iBoy. He is the shining star 
if Rare Adams still want to win this game. They are only 2k gold behind. It is definitely yep. possible. 6-1 and 4, right? Has the Lord Dominic's regard and the crit that's coming out of this Tristana, the Kraken Slayer third hit as well, just being so potent towards this team. And remember that we get the true damage from that item on towards Nuguri, but the rest of FPX are quite squishy. So if they end up falling behind, if they end up getting towards these team fights, Eyeboy's going to have a great time as even Chris is getting burnt to a sunder at half health after three shots. I was going to highlight that with the amount of damage and crit that Eyeboy has right now, if, if LWX or Doonby just walk a bit too close and he gets off one auto, that could suddenly be 20% of their HP gone. True. Why I think I like the Zonya's Hourglass. Of course, you're going to pick it up on Rumble, Rumble anyway, but this item's definitely going to come in handy for these upcoming fights. And uh, Lyric, we probably have to set up what's going to happen next because with those turnabout plays, it does feel like Rare Adam are uh, getting closer towards those points of items. Three items almost there for Lu Yen as well. And... I think Rare Adam could be in a more comfortable position than we could have expected after watching that turnaround early game. The problem is that I don't feel like FPX have a way of really forcing RA into skirmishes without either Baron or Dragon up. Like, sure, you can send Duinby to push out a side wave, maybe have Beichuan Shadow and hope that iBoy overextends, but iBoy doesn't have to overextend. He could be like, hey, again, we're scaling, we're fine, I'll pick up these Krugs, or I'll have numerous members shadow me. Like, RA is options. There's nothing that, that is do or die right now. It's where FPX, I mean, you're waiting 40 seconds for the next Dragon or, or the Baron to come up and hoping you win a fight big enough off that to turn that into a Baron or to turn that into an inhibitor to then, you know, push the cogs of the game forward. Keep that tempo remaining, as it were, before 2,000 gold here still for FPX. But note the Dragon timer, 20 seconds in the top left-hand corner of your screen. FPX stole the last one as LWX under Lu Yen. Jungler almost taken down, but he has to back Lyric, and it means he won't be near the fight in 10 seconds. No, so this should definitely be a Dragon secured for the side of FPX. I don't think RA are going to contest. We can already see their members moving up towards the top side. When they're on two Dragons, they are fine with giving this one away. I don't think it means too much for RA. Like, it, it doesn't hurt them too bad. It's like, hey, FPX is tanky. They're, they're getting more tank stats from this Foundry because they do still have enough DPS. And for FPX, they still didn't get the fight. So I want to see if they do get more, uh, like, dire and look for a dive or if they're just going to go back to what they did before and try to start baiting Baron or looking for Baron 50-50s because that feels like the only thing on the cards. Really yeah, uh, uh, if the Baron comes up, which it is now, to, to be granted, uh, I guess we want to see the vision control laid out because Rare Adam have been pretty good around controlling this objective. Last time around, FPX cleared it as it was spawning and... Uh, Rare Adam for now, just doing their due diligence. Hung drops a ward into the back of the pit as FPX now reset. Let's see what the priority is because uh, FPX still pushing mid. They're actually leaving LWX and Doombi to sit in the same line. And, I mean, we, we don't see too much, right? RA are still fine just clearing their camps. They are all hovering around their inner turrets. And now it's about... FPX making this Baron bait. I'm glad that I don't have to just keep theorizing if they're going to do it. They are heading around. They are setting up vision, and it looks like they're just going to go for it. But that ward from Rare Adam, Doombi sitting on it right now. It hasn't been cleansed away. No control ward outside of the pit. And Nuguri sitting in here. He will be spotted out. RA trying to use that bait as Hung's body slams forward, but FPX know better. They're just going to back off. I feel like the only other opportunity to FPX is if they do want to try to send LWX maybe to a side lane to answer Tristana and have Beichuan shadow and look for that play. The problem is that RA have done such a good job at controlling defensive vision. As you can see, Epics don't really have deep wars in their jungle. They can never know if anyone's shadowing. And as we've seen in the previous two games, even if it is a 1v2 technically, the card this ult is always there, which makes it a 2v2. Yeah. Right, and hung with Shirelius as well. He's been roaming quite a lot and, and shadowing between Eyeboy and Fofo to this game. So you can see now, up towards the top side, he will be spotted out by some good wards from FPX, but if the fight goes on long enough, Hung can get involved too. I like that you mentioned the Requiem though, because Lu Yen is now a lot more relevant than he was when he started out this game at two and six, when he was so far behind of Beach One, who was just picking up kills to Anasis, rather, to accessorize his collection. Three items for both these junglers now, though. Void Staff in the hands of Lo Yan, and he's almost 16 for the level 3 ultimate. 
the nice thing uh, for FPX against a card, this is right. Baytron is, is super tanky. He has a ton of magic resist coming out from the Force of Nature and the Turbo Chem Tank. You have a tank in the bot lane, a tank in the top side. Rumble itemizes health items, which at least help a little bit. So your only member that's in a lot of fear of getting completely bursted out is LWX. And he's also bought the, uh, the Hex Drinker. So even he is paying respect to this card. This So maybe we're even waiting for another item breakpoint before Lu Yen is really able to dish out massive damage. Even something like a Rabadon's, which is 3,800 gold. I don't even know if this game will last long enough for him to hit an item breakpoint like that. At least the needlessly large rod, you know, that first of flat AP is still going to be impactful. But you're right, you know, something like that, the fourth item to cap it off. Also want to note that fourth item for the Tristana would be big, but maybe we don't have time. Baron being started up, Lyric and FPX have to make a decision if they're pulling off. It's good though, Hysterics. We've been asking for this for the past three to four minutes. FPX need to look oh for plays God. like this. They get a 50-50 and they and make they it somehow. Lo Yen goes into the back of the pit for the steal. But remember, level disadvantage as Sion comes on in. Mountain Rift saves. Nuggery from the rest of the team, or rather RA from Nuggery. Baron now picked up, Loyan on a big death timer, and FBX trying to push it forward. And you know, people might think, hey, aren't good teams and top teams not supposed to do 50-50s? Top esports 50 50 so many like souls and elders and barons all yeah. last year. They did it like every chance they could. It seems like Carson just wanted to do that smite challenge against you and find out who's better. So it's not too surprising for FBX to be here doing this. Now, again, can they capitalize? Because at the end of the day, their comp isn't going to win through CG. They are still going to need to be able to force a fight. So now it's about pushing deep in the enemy jungle. You actually get deep wards down now, maybe trying to catch out someone in transition, or what I expect FPX to do after next dragon, maybe just dive in an inhibitor turret. You're extremely yeah. tank tanky. You have a ton of lockdown. If you can get on top of Iboy and Lu Yen, you, you can just burst them instantly. You can destroy the team that doesn't have something like a Scion, right? You know, Aatrox, Krog is facilitating that role, but Importantly as well, I like the Abyssal Mask for Nuguri that's going to enhance Doonby's damage coming into this fight. I think also importantly to note that FPX are gearing up before we even get towards the inhibitor turrets, waiting for something off the side. Definitely are, and uh, we, we also need to remember that, uh, you know, we see the mythic that Crisp has built, the uh, Locket of Iron Solari. Oh, wait, I need to pause. Starting early, Magnet Storm, and down goes Lu Yan. Immediately the Equalize put out, Doombi flashes over the wall. Beach one's deep, but he's actually tanky enough. As it's a, a bit of a vile trade here. Requiem has already been used, but LWX, Cube runs into him. Doombi at the ready again, he gets the reset. Nugri does not take damage from Iboy, but he's still hitting away. The true damage starting to do quite a bit, and Iboy finally breaks through this tank. Zombie running after him, the rocket jump burn. And Fofo has to slow him with dissonance. FPX lose their support, but they'll take down three more. Hysterics, that fight came out of absolutely nowhere. It went pretty even. FPX coming out ahead in the long run because they are the team that gets the dragon. But we still saw the, the keys to victory for RA, right? Iboy was allowed to free hit. No one's able to get on top of him. They do bait out a lot of key ultimates from FPX, but still at the end of the day, it just wasn't enough. And now we still have the Baron pushing with some death timers on RA's side. Uh, look at the bottom lane. Doombi setting up the wave. Top pushing as well. But we'll have a look at how this happened. You said it came out of nowhere. You're damn right. Yeah, we just see Crisp and Beichuan going in. Really nice equalizer from Doombi. Takes out Lo Yen right away. Beichuan's still just causing a bunch of chaos on the back line. But as we mentioned with FPX's comp, it's kind of like a one-punch combo. Doombi and Beichuan now having to get out of there. LWX is now the only member able to lay down consistent DPS. Him and Nuggery find the kill on the cube. But still, it ends up being a one-for-one one overall because Iboy's massive. But Hunk kind of just runs it, which allows Beichuan time to get back to the dragon. And I just want to go back real quick, because the point I was going to make about Locket of Iron Solari, right, is that you're also granting your allies more bonus magic resist. So another yeah. item that is pretty good up against Lillian's Carcass. I also wanted to look at who he put the, uh, who he put the, uh, the spark on. The second item there, my god. Zeke's Convergence. Sorry, today's been a rough day. Uh, Zeke's Convergence on, remember now, with CC to activate, so... I will uh, say, Hysterix, <laughs> at least I... for me, support item names are definitely the most forgettable out of the lot. And they're That's usually true. the longest as well, or the most, yeah. like, obscure. Especially with awn upgrades now, if anyone's seen the awn upgrades on the support items, they're... Reliquary they're of the Golden Dawn or something like that is what yeah, Locket's upgraded to. The, 
the bastion of the shields from Duran, you know, like what? something like that. Yeah. It, that, that's not one, but it's it, like that's the chain of thought. Uh, the support odds have changed a bit, but I think the biggest thing going forward now is how FBX you mentioned are going to dive and inhibit a turret. You're right on point. Fofo at half health, and now that's their window through. Oh, and Nuggery goes for it. Yeah, and Loyan dead again. He's not having a great time this game against the Hecarim Explosive cast separates FPX, but this is the cast as ultimate. That was a bit of a in the end. So FPX get out pretty much unscathed, and they break the inhibitor turret doing so. And now they're going to wait out some of their key abilities. LDBX going to heal up with his lifesteal, pick up the red buff, and now we should expect FPX to take this inhibitor, but I think they're just going to look to engage again. Electro Harpoon gets a slow onto Hung. That's the window for engage for Chris. Rocket jump out from Eyeboy. In come FPX by the five. Cube here on the side gets tagged for one. Trying to defend with four members, but in with the Magnet Storm onto Hung. Down immediately, but the Shockwave brings two together. Base one's still alive, but look, into the back line. They need to kill Eyeboy. They'll do it eventually, but what has it cost? FPX lose a carry. And now with two members left remaining, they have to back away. And we're sticking in a similar situation where it, it doesn't really matter how FPX start off the fight. RA are playing it patiently, and they're usually able to trade. When iBoy flashed in for the LWX kill, though, I thought it was over. I'm surprised RA are still able to posture and force FPX back. But still, okay. nice hold coming from RA. We're getting to the point now, right? Three and I say four items on, on the key members. This game is in the hands of Fofo. It's in the games of iBoy. The tough thing for RA is that we've seen their front line isn't very durable. We've talked about this many times on broadcast that Kragas isn't really a true tank. You don't True. really have any uh, resistance steroids, and your build is very supportive. It's all in the hands of Cube, who obviously is also more of a bruiser rather than a full-on tank. So if Cube and Hung just get deleted, it feels like it's lights out for RA. But iBoy, Fofo, and Lil Yen can definitely just burn through Nuggery. As Hung walks into Nuggery in the meantime, Iceborne's going to slow him down. Body slam, block, teleport being burned by RA. As now the support at half health just as Baron spawns. FPX have done this numerous times in this game, burning out members before we get into the setup for objective, as Cube might not want to be here. Slowed down with Electro Harpoon, oh. as that equalizer was the worst of the game. Uh, Doombi's actually been pretty on point with them so far in that one. Now going to put it on about a 25 second, 30 second cooldown. As Culling, Hung, explosive cast, LWX out of position. He's going to line up here with the piercing light. Flashes over the wall though, Chris. His support saves the day with the Magnet Storm. Low end, low, and he dies in the end. The Shockwave pulls in Nuggery. FPX are scattered. Doombi re-engages Cube. Almost lands onto LWX. And somehow, FPX are okay here. As at the end of the day, Low Yen channeled the ulti while he was still alive on low HP. iBoy cleans up the rest of it. And that was definitely the messiest fight we've seen in the series. And at the end of the day, they weren't on the same page either, right? We saw Doombi flash over the wall after LWX had already started walking back to mid lane. So questionable plays coming out from FPX. <laughs> LWX? He's going to go, for, go this? for this. But this is one versus three into iBoy, the AD carry. And it's Tristana full build. Now, Dragon Soul going to be set up, and the whole of FPX is sitting dead. And, you know, Asterix, I know we're going to get a replay of it, but to set the stage of how that fight started, we actually saw two ultimates blown by FPX before before the actual team fight broke out, right? We saw Duinby with that equalizer, and we saw the calling start and get interrupted, so a lot of that one-punch combo that FPX had wasn't even able to be utilized. Now RA just going to turn straight to this Baron. And this is going to disappear before anyone gets nearby. FPX know that. There are teleports available on Doombi and Nuggery. But iBoy shreds this Baron quicker than Uber gets to the door. RA with the Baron. And we're going to have a look at this one again because you said it was so disjointed from FPX. Yeah, so Equalizer already down. Nice body slam to cancel out the calling. LWX forced to flash away immediately. And iBoy is now in a good position. W's over the wall away from the damage dealers of FPX. He is still able to free hit in the back line. Lil Yen also putting out a ton of damage before he dies. And this is where you look. Doombi flashes in while LWX is walking back towards the mid lane. So, you know, whether FPX could have been able to win this or not had LWX been here, you know, we don't even get to find out because they just weren't on the same page. I still expect RA had enough damage and enough front line to win that fight, but yeah. that uh, definitely was the worst possible scenario for FPX on all fronts. And you have to remember that it was a GA on iBoy that was all flash for and tried to kill this AD carry. Now that that's down, iBoy had enough money to go back and pick up the Bloodthirster. 
So this is a full item Tristana still, now with excess healing until the GA passive comes up and available and then I expect we'll probably keep transitioning, transitioning, excuse me, until the game reaches its end. Yeah, he's about a hundred more damage than LWX right now from what we saw. So yeah. like, he's like 480, LWX is 376 or something. So he is hitting like a truck. The resets come out and, you know, <laughs> it's kind of funny because we did see both teams do what we predicted, right? FPX kept trying to force fights a dragon. They kept they kept forcing these barren 50-50s. But RA the whole time have just been like, it is cool. You take whatever you want. We're going to farm up. And Good. I honestly believe RA are favorites to win this game now. 40 minutes in, you set the conditions so well. Eyeboy farmed his way up to this point. Fofo almost towards his final item as well. Note that he's at 350 CS in this game number three. And we're at the point where Lucian is not going to be as impactful as the Tristana, of course. So LWX got his work cut out for him. And with the Baron RA now trying to build more work on top of FPX through this mid lane. For FPX, I feel like their one big condition is Duinby needs a massive ultimate. And Chris needs one as well, but the Magnet Storm only connects onto one. Nugri goes straight forward. LWX still on touch, but the Shockwave brings them together. Now Kiss shouts Fofo, but FPX, they're done kissing. They want to kill. The Requiem comes on down late game. Karthus destroys FPX from multiple angles. Duinby in the middle of it all, trying to kill Hung. Can't even do that much. And Fun plus Phoenix are wiped with three dead versing three of RA. And remember that iBoy has that bloodthirst that you highlighted. He can lifesteal up and they can keep pushing. RA can look for the end. We talked about RA needing big wins against big teams. They're on the win streak, but here against FPX, they tone up better than we've ever seen as they head towards the Nexus turrets. The tank and the support need to delay this one out, but iBoy, he's shredding the turret so damn quick. Back in with the Feromance crash down, but it's denied. And as the support goes down, as Chris meets his end, Nugri has to watch as the Nexus is now exposed. iBoy raises the kitten in the air, and Rare Adam completely upset, two to one. Insane performance by RA. They are now tied for third. They are eight and three with uh, Team WE. FPX now actually fall to eight and four. So even overtaking them in the standings.